we're going to hear from a young man by the name of Amr Muhammad, and he was one of the winners in the YouTube Space Lab competition. And Amr is currently a student at Stanford <coughs> University. He's from Alexandria, Egypt. And he investigated how microgravity affects jumping spiders and how that affects them hunting their prey. Hello. I'm a little bit nervous. We're a friendly audience. We hope so. Uh, I do this <laughs> when I'm nervous, I've just realized. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to talk about jumping spiders, my experiment. Uh, but first, uh, I'm going to tell you a little story. Uh, so I'm reading this book, Packing for Mars. And there is, it, the book mentions briefly in one of the chapters, one of the experiments that, were, that was done in the 50s. And it was really interesting because the experiment has striking resemblance to the experiment I've done, except that the results are very different. Uh, so there is this Nazi physician, uh, Harold von Beck. And like many post-war Nazis, he lived in Argentina. And he was keeping up with uh, the, what's happening in the space exploration. And a very new thing at the time was the zero-G flights. It was becoming clear at the time that zero-G does not pose grave threat to human beings. A lot of pilots were being flown in, uh, on zero-G flights, told to do the vital things uh, that <coughs> the things that are vital for our survival, like eat or drink. They were studying whether gravity is necessary to help food through. And it was becoming clear that there's no great threat to being in weightlessness. Uh, what he wanted to investigate is whether weightlessness would affect other things that are not vital or are not directly vital, like orientation, for example. So naturally, he... Uh, picked a species which is the snake neck turtles or <coughs> Hydromediosa tectifera for the biologists in here. And what he did is that he sent them on a zero G flights. So let me give you a little background on how these uh, turtles hunt. Uh, they are, they, they have long necks from the name. So what they do is that they curl their necks in S shape and then they unwind in bullet speed strikes that rarely miss. So he gets this really good hunters in a zero G flights and places a bait right in front of them. He, he tests that, he tests this, uh, he repeats the experiment in regular flights and in zero G flights. And in zero G, his paper says that the, the turtles moved slowly and insecurely and could not eat the bait that was placed right in front of them. Uh, that's the experiment. I'm going to get back to it after my, I explain mine, and then we're going <coughs> to compare the results. So for the jumping spiders in space, the inspiration, well, the aim is to study the effects of microgravity on jumping spiders. Because the, the, the resemblance between the two experiments come from that the, both species, the way they hunt is that, first of all, they're active hunters. They're not ambush hunters. They go after their prey. And what they do is that both creatures have a certain trajectory in mind before they attack. And trajectories get affected by gravity. Uh, just simple physics. And they can do the simple physics. They rarely miss. And so what I expected is that I expected for the trajectory that worked in gravity in 9.8 acceleration would fail in zero gravity. So. The sp I, I investigated this, and I discovered the spiders have been in space before, but not jumping spiders, though. This is Esmeralda, and uh, she is a web-spinning spider, an orb weaver, and orb weavers are very common and very popular among arachnophiles. Uh, they are 
uh, th actually, this kind of spider was actually featured in the children's book, Charlotte's Web. And what it does is that it's an ambush hunter. It builds a web. It makes sure that it builds a good ambush. And it patiently waits for the, for the fly or the prey to fly through and get s stuck in the, in the sticky web. So the, the spider was sent to space to study whether it can spin webs in space. So the main question was whether the spiders can spin webs in, in, in space. And the result was, yes, they could. But the web they spun in, uh, in space is very different. I want to show you one picture from this video, is that orb weavers are very good at building strong, dense, symmetrical web. The web is very symmetrical. And the web it built in space is, you can see that there's parts where it's very dense and there are other parts where it's not dense at all. That being said, the web was good enough for the disadvantaged prey because fruit flies cannot fly in space to just get stuck in those and Esmeralda to just walk around and eat them. So ambush hunters are very successful and they are not affected by gravity at all. So what I decided to do is that I decided to pick a, a species of spider that is not an ambush hunter, that is an active hunter and does not build webs to ambush the prey. So jumping spiders are, are very impressive because what they do is that they can hunt preys many times larger than their size and they can jump distances that are many times the length of their bodies without using any special muscles. They are very strong and they, I'm going to explain the way they hunt uh, here on Earth just to have to, just to have an idea on, on, the te on their technique. So what it does here is that you can see that the spider has four pairs of large eyes. Uh, the bee is the prey in this case, and the, it has some, uh, it has some, a pair of eye on the on the back of its on the back of its head. So no matter where the bee is, it's always on the spider's radar. It, it, so he he does move with the prey, but he doesn't have to. It can stay stationary, and no matter where the bee is, it will always be seen by him. He will wait until the the bee is in range. He will approach slowly, and his eyes are really impressive because they have amazing. Uh, locating skills. It can locate the, the prey precisely. Just approaching the prey. Sorry. Everything has to be perfect. If it, if it sees him approaching, lunch is done. So in the original video, they talk about its eight legs, the anatomy of the spider. And after approaching, before it, it jumps, I want you to notice the thread that it will glue before jumping. Here is the thread. He, he glues a thread from where he's jumping before jumping so that if he misses the prey and there is a river or something below, he doesn't fall around and fish eat him. So he has to be very careful. He catches the bee and the bee tries to struggle, but it won't work. The bee is done. He, he, he immediately kill, kills the bee with his jaws. It will try to struggle, but he's a very good hunter, so he will eat the, he will eat the bee. So <coughs> in space, what I thought would happen is that for, for, for a creature to have the trajectory in its mind before jumping, what would happen is that when you're having this trajectory, you compensate for gravity. <coughs> So essentially, if, you want, if I want to throw a ball to somebody, I would compensate for gravity, so I would throw it with an angle. I wouldn't throw it straight. And astronauts in space, for the first couple of weeks, when they hand stuff to their uh, colleagues, they tend to do this. Instead of handing it right, right in a straight line, they tend to, to compensate for gravity. So what I thought would happen is that the spider will always miss by, by this trajectory, by this angle that is compensating for gravity, and will always be hitting wall and floating around. But what happened is that the spider, well, there was trial and error and trial and error, but then the spider finally figured it out and could hunt. The amazing part 
is that not only could it adapt to space, but they were very successful in hunting. At one point, I was worried that they're gonna run out of fruit flies <laughs> because of the rate it's hunting the, the prey. And they survived the, the, the trip back. And they could readapt back to Earth. So the, the, the amazing part for me was that <coughs> not only did they adapt space, but there was a rehabilitation process that I could see. And the striking part about this rehabilitation process is that uh, astronauts in rehabilitation, they don't have to chase and hunt their food, right? But this spider has to. And you can see in this video, this is my favorite video from all the footage of this experiment. So this is in orbit. We can see uh, the spider just moving around, killing the prey. It's killing it. So he's about to make a jump on one of those sprays. And this is back on Earth. He misses and falls on its back. And this never happens. They rarely miss this way. If they miss, they miss <coughs> a few mil millimeters. They never fall this way. And it will try again and miss again. <coughs> this is fighting with gravity after spending six months. But now it, will, it caught it. So the final, this is the first successful hunt after uh, coming back from space. And this is why I'm in love with this footage. It's, it's great, it catches the first successful hunt after tr trying several times. The first time I saw this video, I watched it five times. <laughs> I just loved it. So that's it for me. I will be around. <laughs> I'm sorry, I forgot to tell you about the other experiment. So the Von Beck's experiment uh, happened on a zero-g flight, meaning that the turtles had 30 seconds to get the prey, right? That's not a lot of time because the spiders <coughs> took hours before it came out of its chamber. So when they were in space and, and the experiment was ready to be done, they just stayed in their chambers, not moving, for hours. And they missed a few times. And then when they came back to here on Earth, they also stayed hours before they could make a successful hunt. So I think that 30 seconds are not enough for species to adapt, and that's why the results came out very differently. Uh, had Von Beck uh, had access to an international space station or any kind of space station, he would have had, had different results, at least what, that's what I think. And I think this opens uh, new questions uh, on whether animals can be uh, tested for, uh, to study more on rehabilitation process because uh, we don't know whether uh, there is a point where readaptation is impossible, where uh, a creature uh, adapts to zero gravity irreversibly, for example. And I feel that many animals can be used to study that in the future. Thanks, Omar. I don't know about you, but I feel a few nightmares coming on later tonight. <laughs>